Hey guys, in this video I'm going to be talking about sudden oak death. And sudden oak death is caused by a pathogen, specifically a protist called Phytophthora remorum, and it has had devastating consequences over the past decade, killing over 1 million oak and tan oak trees. And the consequences of the loss of all of these trees and forests is also devastating because we lose a bunch of structures for wildlife, it has effects on uh, soil mixing and it also disrupts community structures and the take-home message from this is that there needs to be biocontrols that have minimally disruptive impacts to stop the spread of sudden oak death and so one of the interesting observations that previous studies have found uh, and that we can see in practice is that not all trees get infected by P. remorum uh, what if Bay laurel trees act as foliar hosts, which mean that the piramorum can survive on the leaves of the bay laurel trees, but the piramorum cannot actually infect the bay laurel tree and cause it to die. That isn't the case though when we look at oak trees like the coast live oak, because coast live oak trees readily get infected and will die when exposed to piramorum. And the question here is why? And the key, one of the key intuitions behind this is the fact that Phytophthora remorum needs sterols, and sterols are building blocks that it uses to create biomolecules such as steroid hormones, which are used for cell signaling, and cholesterol, which is used to strengthen its cell membrane. And P. remorum on its own cannot synthesize sterols, so it must acquire them from external sources using a protein called elicitin. And so what will happen is the piramorum will secrete elicitin, but plants have a defense molecule called tannins. And tannins is a generic class of polyphenolic molecules. This just means that they have a bunch of phenols on them. And I have a picture of a generic phenol functional group up in this top right corner. and. Uh, one of the other things is that different types of plants and different trees are going to have different kinds of tannins. There's going to be a different arrangement of these phenols and these carbonyl groups which may impact their potency in uh, slowing piramorum vegetative growth and sporulation. And so another thing to take here is that tannins are water soluble so they're going to dissolve into the aqueous phase of a solution in which these piramorum uh, protists are around and they're going to be precipitating out the elicitin protein. And so the hypothesis that we had going into this experiment was that because the bay laurel trees don't get infected, the bay laurel tannin, which we will get from an aqueous extract by boiling the bark in water for a few hours will inhibit the hyphal growth but we don't expect it to have any impact on sporulation because the bay laurel tree is a foliar host now what we also expect to see with the coast live oak aqueous extract of the tannin solution is that it will not affect vegetative growth because these trees do get infected and they do die and in addition to that they're not going to affect sporulation because piramorum quite readily is able to spread from tan oak to tan oak based on what we've seen over the past 10 years. Now the results of our data show that when we placed the tannins, when we cultured these tannins in solutions of a control which was just DI water, neutral pH, when we looked at the counts of empty sporangia we found a lot fewer in our bay laurel and coast live oak extracts. And so this means that these tannin solutions are very potent at eliminating the uh, empty sporangia that we're seeing. And this is also proven statistically with our uh, Tukey post test after an ANOVA single factor test uh, based on these very low p-values. And when we looked at the number of full zoosporangia, uh, I'm sorry, full sporangia. What we did find is that 
The bay laurel tree was roughly equivalent to our controls, so that is to say that the bay laurel tannins uh, don't have much of an impact on the number of full sporangia, sporangia containing the zoospores, but the coast live oak tree had a lot fewer uh, full sporangia in it. And this might be an interesting finding because what this says is that maybe there's something in the coast live oak tannin extract that is causing these full zoospores to release, these full sporangia to release their zoospores. And we again see this uh, in our p-values uh, after the Tukey post test. And then we looked at just normal zoospores present in solution. Uh, what we did find again is that the tannins are very effective at eliminating the zoospores. And this was a little counterintuitive, especially given our hypothesis. Now, also counterintuitive was the vegetative growth difference that we observed. What we found was with coast live oak, depending on how we interpreted the data, because we cultured the P. remorum on a V8 agar plate and we had quadrants, and one of those quadrants was a control in which we used regular DI water, and in the other three quadrants, we placed the tannin extract from that specific species of tree. When we looked at the relative growth, the growth difference between the control and each one of those quadrants uh, in our samples, what we found is that with coast live oak trees, there was actually an enhancement in the hyphal growth of Piramorum. And it was very small, just 0.5 millimeters average, but this does mean that there might be something within the tannin extract that is causing the Piramorum hyphal growth to be stimulated. And then we did see the opposite effect with our bay laurel. The bay laurel uh, tannin extract inhibited the hyphal growth of Piramorum. Now, it should be noted that if you analyzed our data differently, if you were to just look at collectively all of the control quadrant growth radii, all of the coast live oak growth and the bay laurel growth radii, if you looked at these values, there is no statistically different uh, differences within our data set. So that is an important note to take here. And perhaps uh, what this strongly suggests is that future studies will need to repeat the vegetative growth measurements with these tannin extracts to determine if these tannin solutions are good at inhibiting vegetative growth. But what we see at the end of the day with this study is that our tannin solutions have proven to be very effective at the zoospore and um, sporangia concentrations in solution. So perhaps using the tannin extracts as some kind of mechanism to stop the contagious or the, the spread of piramorum might be very effective in practice. And so thanks for watching and I hope you guys found this interesting and useful.